Well, welcome back to the Market with Mario podcast. And today we have Daniel with Nextwork Marketing on. And for those of you who have been listening to our podcast uh, before, you know that Mark Friedman uh, with Frito Nation was uh, hosting and producing the podcast. Unfortunately, has passed away. Um, and so uh, our heartfelt condolences to his friends and uh, family. And um, if you are one of many, who Mark served, um, I do want to let you know that we have a great solution um, for you. Uh, Daniel with Nextwork Marketing can handle your podcast, the video. He has a studio very similar to Mark, um, but I just wanted to pay a quick tribute uh, to Mark. He was not only uh, a great producer, uh, but a friend. So um, just wanted to mention that right off the, the bat. Um, so we, as you know, host a uh, podcast for home repair contractors. We're telling them, giving them value on how to grow their businesses, um, whether it's a you know CPA, marketing, what have you. We're here to serve the home repair community, and today we're going to be talking about podcasts. And so, podcasts are all the rage, right? Yeah. Um, so. I have a podcast, obviously, but I'm, I'm in marketing. So a home repair contractor may think, should I have a podcast? What are your thoughts on uh, like a plumber or a roofer yeah. having a podcast? Yeah, I think anybody that's trying to reach a target audience should have a podcast, have a place where they sit down, talk about what they do, have people on that, that work with them and show kind of behind the scenes. I think it's uh, it gives good branding. It gives good um, image to like name with the company and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, plumbers, any home repair company, I think would be a good fit for it. And yeah, just depending on your audience. Yeah, I like I like what you said about the branding. It's it's similar to what, what I tell home repair contractors is if you've ever gone out to a nice restaurant and there's an open kitchen, mm -hmm. you kind of automatically think that kitchen is clean yeah. because it's open and you can see back there, you can see the cooks doing their things and, sure. and the chefs and all that. And so whenever you're able to put yourself on camera or in this case you know on a, on a podcast then it, to me it tells the audience like hey we're we're real people and yeah. we're not afraid to be out there with our with our content yeah um, and then like you said having them bring on different people that are in their industry um, would help get their brand out there for, for sure. sure absolutely for sure. Um, one of the things that I think would be um, something that would be an objection of theirs is they're always in the field, they're always working, yeah. they're on projects. So how am I going to have time to even record this podcast? So kind of yeah. kind of open the door, kind of shed some light on what kind of time constraints, what would they be needing to do to, to start a podcast if they're like, yeah, that's a good idea, but where are you gonna, am I yeah. going to find time? I'm a plumber. For sure, for sure. Well, podcasting has a wide range of I would say quality and efficiency so I mean you can go all the way from really all you need is a camera and a microphone right so you can go from do an iPhone with you know like a clip-on mic to you know kind of a full setup with a board and all of that stuff now um, when you get to editing and you get to behind the scenes on that part it gets a little bit trickier with camera works and, and that sort of thing so that's where efficiency starts playing a role I would say um, so like for us, we've got three cameras and then a switchboard that switches between the cameras, which eliminates all of the editing of what you would do having three cameras, three microphones or whatever, and then clipping that up and putting them together based on that. So um, I guess just depending on how, how, how in depth you want to get into podcasting or how much value you see in it, you could go from just doing one camera, one microphone, and then all the way to you know, three cameras, four cameras a set, and that's that sort of thing. At that point, I would recommend probably finding somebody to help you out, though. If you're if you're wanting ease of time and use, probably wanting wanting to find somebody that has a studio that can do the editing for you is going to be the quickest thing. You can just walk in, do the do the set for 20, 30 minutes, walk out. So that's exactly why I hired you guys because exactly. <laughs> so. I did not want to do all of this um, and. You guys really make it easy For to sure. just show up, record, I leave. You guys do all the behind-the-scenes things. So keep that in mind if you are a home repair contractor that 
studios like this do exist, I'd recommend you yeah. know this one because obviously you could. It's it's nice. It's local. You know, yeah. all of my clients are here in the McKinney area. So, um, one thing you touched on before though was bringing on guests. So, I like the format of hosting a podcast, bringing someone on like yourself, mm. and having them share their expertise. Yeah. So, take the landscaper, pool builder. What are some guests that they could bring on so they're not just talking for 20 minutes about pools yeah yeah that yeah because you you do run out of content pretty quickly if you're just talking about your business um so like what we've done in the past um <clears throat> is just other companies in the industry so any other companies related to home repair if you've got a buddy that's a roofer and you're a pool guy having that you still you're still working with the same clients the same target audience mm -hmm. is, is all the same so sharing sharing the audience with that person especially if they're making content too and then they're sharing their audience with you that's how you kind of get that build with with content that's not as flashy or poppy as some of the other guys stuff so yeah. you, you are competing in a really competitive space as far as content making goes and so you're competing against the guy who's driving around in a Ferrari or whatever that's shown girls and all this stuff that's that's tough to compete with on social media so uh, the biggest way is sharing audiences with with each other yeah that's a great point twofold um, and take the pool builder for instance they're probably gonna have subcontractors out there that for they could sure. bring on so they're they're gonna have plumbers to do you know the the plumbing aspect of it they may have someone that come out and, and dig the actual you know pool right so they're and you know a lot of these uh, homeowners when they get a pool they want the landscaping done as well so you may bring on a landscaper yeah. and so you can bring on um, guests that don't necessarily compete with you but you work with exactly and like yeah. you said you have a shared audience and so it's a this is a hack uh, for you guys out there is to bring on guests because they're also going to share their content with their sphere of influence yeah. as well and so you know take this podcast I would hope that you know you're sharing on your socials yeah. I'm sharing on mine so it's kind of a double you know double whammy exactly. there as far as getting the content out there I, I yeah. always recommend bringing on a guest so that you are not just again it'd be super boring if I were just up here talking about marketing right for 20 right. minutes yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so get, you don't want to do that yeah, so yeah sure. definitely but that's that, that's a good point to bring on um, kind of strategic you know people who you already are working with right. and I know a lot of yeah. contractors will sub different parts of the, the service yeah so that's good yeah absolutely yeah. Um, so we're doing a a podcast on a monthly basis and there's obviously there's different um, schools of thought on this like what is your what is your recommendations on how often people should be releasing a podcast and let's let's narrow it down to you know again the home home services space sure. home repair space so how often do you think they should be um, putting out episodes I, yeah it's a tricky that's a tricky question because there is a little bit of a balance in in creating this type of content. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to record so much that you aren't giving enough time of of showing what happened in the podcast. So either clipping and editing, and, or you also you also want to promote it as well. So you need you need enough time in between where people understand that there's a rhythm to it and that they can expect it and they haven't seen so much content that it's not something new coming into their into their feed right so when they when they see that you're about to post for the month and you're about to post the the one podcast for that month <clears throat> they can anticipate that coming because it's once a month if you're posting one a week then since there's so much content coming out it's they're so used to seeing the, your stuff on their feed they don't know it's hard to dif differentiate that this is a new podcast they need to watch this or anticipate this so we caught ourselves um, at one point putting out too much content. We were putting out one one reel a day and then one podcast a week, and so seven reels a week and, and a podcast a week. And it was at first it was really good. We got a lot of boosts and a lot of traction. And then you start wearing them out, and then your your traction starts slowing down. So once we built in a cadence of every other week um, or once a month, that kind of we, we saw spikes again because you show a dip and then you come back up and you 
have more content come out and I guess social media likes that but they do look for consistency so and lots of posting so you need to be posting every day I'm not saying a podcast every day or a clip every day or anything like that but you need to be posting at least a picture a day you need to be posting something you know pretty frequently for sure to stay in the algorithm and all that totally so and to say you know inside in mind and you brought up two really good points in in the consistency part I, I always tell people and I relate it to, to video because mm-hmm. we you know we do a lot of you know video with clients is you want to make sure that you can keep up with the frequency yeah. and be consistent because your audience if it's value they're going to look forward to it yeah. so if you come out of the gate hot and heavy and you taper off mm-hmm. it's not a good look but if you start out okay we can do one a month and yeah. now we have the rhythm to where you can always do more yeah but it's hard to start out with with more so what i'm hearing you saying is it's very similar in podcasting mm-hmm. with you know with video is you want to make sure that you can actually stay consistent yeah with it um and then another thing that you hit on was you know if it's too frequent then you're just numb yeah um and so you know if you have a, a good steak you know it tastes terrific well yeah. the next night that steak is good mm-hmm. and then by the third night you're just done with steak for the yeah. meat right yeah. so you want to make sure that um you're you're fresh for and, sure. and not just beating your audience over the head especially um and again i say this with respect i have nothing respect for the trades but let's get real. No one wants to hear from the roofer yeah. on a daily basis on a podcast, right? right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. something that you can keep up with um, on a uh, consistent basis. So those are those are great points. Um, and like I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, you do have this studio um, here in McKinney. So kind of walk me through, because I'll, I'll be referring, you know, people that used to use um, Mark uh, sure. to you, obviously. Um, but kind of walk me, walk the audience through how to get their podcast set up with you. What what does that look like, kind of briefly? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure maybe if you can tag me on on the post or totally. something like that, um, you can find me through there and either direct message me or uh, nextworkmarketing.co. You can go on there and book a call. We can talk about it and uh, just kind of figure out what what you're looking to do. Um, Another point that I just wanted to touch on as well is, is the quantity and quality thing. Yes. So just gauging how much time you have available to, to put into this and then how much value you see out of it, um, you should probably use that to, to decide on how much you want to put into actually doing podcasting and that sort of thing. So you can get the quality and, and it's quantity is not as important, especially with um, your the audience that, that you're working with. So. I would say quality is definitely going to be your your best friend even if you're putting out something once a month or every other month or something like that that kind of cadence with an audience that's that's followed you for a while or with clients that you work with a lot um that they'll see that you're trying to put quality into it and you don't just want to put stuff out just to have content out so um that's important but if you yeah if you go to the website or find me on facebook or instagram just message me call me um my phone number's out there so they, they can probably find it pretty quickly. But. Okay, great. Um, well, if you own a HVAC company, plumber, any home repair, home services, and you're looking to start a podcast, highly recommend it. Uh, I can tell you from my experience being uh, one of Daniel's clients that it is easy peasy. I literally just showed up and they had everything set up. I sat down in the chair, we recorded. So it's a very easy process. So if you are in the McKinney area, um, you need to jump on this opportunity. Uh, I'll make sure to put uh, his information in the show notes. Uh, until then, remember, when you market with Mario, you profit with Mario. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Market with Mario podcast. Be sure to subscribe and share on all the social media platforms. If you own a home repair service business, we'd love to help you out.